Right, so um, design thinking principles, the analytics life cycle, how design thinking can be leveraged and how it will boost. Now these look like four different topics, but believe me, it will be done in 10 minutes and, and in short time. Now, you know, um, we have to understand one small thing that, oh, the color on the computer was different, here it's different, but that's fine. Uh, so, uh, okay, so change will never be this slow again, do we believe? You know, it, in, in fact, whatever you are seeing is actually slow. It could be much faster. I mean, I'm a father of a 24-year-old millennial who now works for me. He was in Accenture for a year, but then he decided to work for my company. And, you know, I know how difficult it is to explain to him, you know, what design thinking is, what quantitative sciences is. And he believes that, you know, he is one of those HubSpot guys, which will, you know, kind he, he'll use words like A-B testing, HubSpot, and, you know, all those kind of things and do work. But anything that can be automated will be automated. We agree to that, right? And which is where, you know, Saloni called me uh, quant uh, something on uh, operational excellence, but that was in my past life. And <laughs> operational excellence is process, and process, you know, is literally going out. We are automating almost everything that is possible. However, will, uh, what cannot be automated will become valuable. I mean, love can't be automated, I certainly believe. You can automate wealth creation and stuff still. Uh, I hope I can do one day. But, but there are, uh, and empathy, I mean, this is the oft used word in design thinking, and I know that everybody does that. So what cannot be, uh, my, my theme has been that what can be automated will be, and what cannot will live forever, right? Uh, very quick definitions, don't look at that. It's, it's all sort of our definitions, but uh, the idea is that, you know, Let's, um, uh, you know, let's navigate ambiguity. That's design thinking for me. You know, I don't write what I, you know, speak. So, so you'll find, I mean, these are typical Tim Brown kind of definitions, which you'll find lots of videos. In fact, design thinking is one of the most searched elements on the internet today, right? So it's, it's about navigating in, uh, ambiguity, and it's about raising the, uh, you know, propensity or raising your outcomes to a different level, okay? And, and, and then, you know, then you know that, okay, you know, uh, if my outcomes are here, this is what I need to do. And, and obviously, it has those hexagons. And I, before the hexagons, I'll just uh, talk about, you know, uh, the project intent. You know, it's very important. Even in analytics today in my company, which is Pi Square, I mean, if I could show, I mean, I'm not here to market my company, but I could, if I could show you the credo of my company, it kind of aligns with it, you know? And, and you know, you have to fill in these blanks before you go to a customer, whether you're talking about your product, whether you're talking about a service, whether you're talking about cloud, whatever you're talking about, our intent is this, we wish to, and, and this is typical set of how uh, might we, I mean, if you know the HMWs of design thinking, this is, this is clearly that, how might we solve the problem? But then, it's not about solution here. It's, it's mainly about understanding intent, so how to conquer intent, right? And uh, next comes the my hexagons. I mean, you'll find on the internet uh, you know, in a different way. But my hexagons are these, which is empathize, define, ideate, prototype, test, and implement, right? You might find this also somewhere. And, but the idea is that you know, empathize is more about research, define is more about you know, user latent needs or pain points, ideate is brainstorm. So the first three are you know, doing the right thing, and the next three are, do, uh, are doing things right. You know, I mean, so first you have to find out what to solve, which is what doing things, uh, what doing the right thing. And then you need to kind of implement, test, or prototype, or you know, the various words we use. And then you come to something what is called, uh, you know, uh, actually doing things right, okay? Uh, having said that, which is, I mean, see, like, I'm, I decided not to talk much on design thinking because there's something, again, available in ways on uh, Mr. Google. And also, you know, you, you are a design, uh, you know, thing. I mean, Alok obviously must have talked to you guys in zillion ways, and he's talked to me in a lot of ways. So I'm, I'm quite sure that that was there in place. But happy to answer any questions if they're around. Right, so now moving on to, you know, what, uh, you know, what I know best, and the gentleman here, he is somebody who runs an AI company, so he knows. Now, uh, so to me, uh, data analytics is the pursuit of extracting. Now see here, I'll actually talk about the definition. There I just fuzzied it because I knew that you know, we are going to interlate it anyway. Now, data analytics is the pursuit of extracting meaning from raw data using specialized computer systems. These systems transform, organize, and model the data to draw conclusions and patterns. Now see, the more complex the definition is, the more I remember three idiots, you know, that 
you know, the first guy explaining what the thing is. But karna kya hai, you know, that kind of thing. So let's put it in very simple, you know, vague terms, or not vague terms, rather uh, in simple terms which helps you understand. So, you know, in any company there is data lying, it's data lying, it's there. I mean, every day you use data. Your mom can tell by data as to if you're coming at 10 o'clock, what have you done? If, uh, you know, you have come at 6 o'clock, what you have done? It's all data because it's, it's what you've seen. You use data to see traffic every day. You, and, and, you know, you have data in terms of what you like, what you don't. I mean, in terms of food and everything, right? So data is there. It's just about whether we analyze it right and whether we analyze it for the right things and whether we answer the right questions. I mean, you know, there could be a lot of, I mean, there is one data which is, you know, you could measure your temperature every day. Today is 98.4, 98.42. But we measure temperature only when we have a fever, right? I mean, this also could be a good start. I mean, keep measuring. But, but that's a useless KPI, and it comes into play only when you are sick or when you want to do, right? Now, so, uh, you know, when I, when I say that, you know, this is an integration between statics and uh, ML algorithms and business context, so what I'm trying to say is that, you know, imagine three sets. And Anal data analytics I'll just define very quickly. Three sets. First is called, anal uh, is called data management, which is nothing but pulling data out of disparate sources, creating one single data mart or data lake or data warehouse. I'll not go into definitions. There are some boundaries there. But basically, you have just created a warehouse of all data coming from elsewhere, right? And then from that data, you query it through algorithms, which is called algorithm management or analytics management. Let's call it analytics management, which is based on what questions you want answered from that data. I mean, if you see there are lots of, uh, you know, uh, uh, things happening in X place, you would want to know only about the X place. Or if you want to know that, you know, how can I predict which of the people now will pay back my loan? I mean, and, and, you know, and so on and so forth. So you could do a lot of supervised learning. And, and just to explain supervised learning, there is an input, there is an output. Now, email, is it a spam or not a spam? It's a simple example of, uh, you know, AI. And, and you know, if you, if you want to really understand analytics, look at uh, videos of Andrew Ng, which is spelled A-R, Andrew and N-G. He's, he's my god for analytics. I mean, he's, he's, uh, he's been boss of Coursera, Google, and so on and so forth. Now he runs his own company in AI, right? So, I mean, uh, he defines uh, supervisor the same, A, B, input, output. It could be like, you know, this guy. Uh, this bank gives a loan, whether they, it will be repaid. Uh, there is an ad on, uh, you know, let's take Facebook, will it be clicked? You know, so these are all supervised learnings. However, if somebody was to define AI as to what it is, you know, the simple thumb rule which Andrew Ng says is what you can think in one second is AI. I mean, it can be automated is AI. Now, that's, that's a very broad rule. But it kind of comes, it's maybe not the thumb rule, but in, like I said, exceptions prove the rule. So what you can think in one second could be what AI is, right? So that's, that's the broad outline of what AI is. I mean, there are, there are things, I've heard words like machine learning, you've heard deep learning. So it's, it's, you know, it's all there. AI is the big circle, ML is a smaller circle within that circle, and deep learning is a still smaller circle within that circle, if that explains. So it's not a Venn diagram, it's a kind of, uh, you know, uh, within each diagram, okay? Uh, some stats, you know, it's always very good to, you know, since we are talking about analytics, it's important to know what people are doing with analytics. 70% are doing this, 57% enterprises are having a CDO. Now, CDO is actually a fact. In fact, I personally believe that CDO is going to replace CMO, as in the chief marketing officer, because, you know, marketing is what? Marketing is about looking at what you can do with customers, not really sales, but, but equipping with sales. So I personally believe that if you have good data with you, you can actually, you know, the, so the chief marketing officer can become the chief data officer. And when I say replace, I mean that he wears a new hat, which is based on data, his decisions, his predictions are based on that, rather than, you know, random outcomes. I mean, you know, because, you know, there was this, um, uh, you know, small anecdote which comes to my mind, which was on marketing, and so in, it might interest you, was that, you know, this was 1991 when, you know, the, I think one of the first World Cups in India was happening, and, you know, I, I mean, Cricket World Cup. No other World Cup is hosted here otherwise, other than Kabaddi, perhaps. Then, uh, so, you know, you had this, um, you know, uh, Cricket World Cup there. The first match was between England and uh, New Zealand, if I remember, in Mohali. And, uh, you know, this uh, MRF decided to launch its tire called MRF Zigma. You know, it was the Z Zigma. 
So you know, what they did was, the first ad appeared on that time and they stocked all the units across everywhere. All dealers had cellophane papers and they removed the cellophane papers when the first ball was bought. When I say first ball was bought, means the ad had already aired. And people just started, I mean, they liked it and they bought it, it did. Now, cut to. This is, again, uh, you know, another year, 1998 or something, I can't remember now. But this was, again, the Cricket World Cup. Again, now, Siet decided uh, that, you know, MRF made a killing there, let me do with something with a nylon grip, which was, you know, kind of a, another tire which had nylon grips and, you know, so on and so forth. They did exactly the same thing. Huge spend on ad, this, that, ready, first ball bold ad there, cellophane paper, did not do well. So, I mean, uh, and, and I'm not sure about the exact numbers. I mean, I'm, I'm, I was told this story, so, uh, you know, don't attribute it to me completely. But what I was saying was marketing is so, uh, you know, diffused that you need a lot of data to actually, you know, take it forward, right? I think I'm going slightly above time, so I'll quickly go on to, you know, what I, I mean. So, basically, design thinking with combined, combined with decision science results in an infusion of empathy with engineering. Now, that's what I was talking about, that what can be automated will be automated, but this infusion is very important. You have to understand where it is technology, I mean, where it is fine on WhatsApp, and when it, you have to go personally and meet the person, whether it is an engagement or whether it is a deal or whether it is anything else, right? Now, uh, so creating vital human-centered design process with the right quality of data design artifacts can be created. Whenever I read from here, it means that this is very menial and it can be found anywhere, <laughs> okay? And then there are, uh, you know, the uh, right blend of sensibility, technical, feasibility, business. I mean, you have heard these words, you know, these three optical diagrams, technical, viability, feasibility. We'll not go into that, but it, what it means is that, you know, analytics is very important part uh, when, when you are actually looking at design thing. And obviously technology has its own ways. You have 3D printing, you have IoT, you have blockchain and so on and so forth, which could be results of a design thinking process where you're uh, trying to find out solutions. So more often than not, design thinking actually leads to technology solutions. And more often than not, it is analytics in a lot of cases because you need to find out what you want to do, right? Um, okay, so here's a D stop. Uh, do you know this word called Gestalt or Gestat or whatever it is called. <laughs> so it means that an organized whole that is perceived as more than some of the two. So it's like uh, Do or Do Panch, that movie of, you know. So it's, it's like this. So content precedes design. Design without data is just decoration, according to me, right? And data without design is pervasive and not scalable. You know, if you don't have the right design in the, I mean, we have been talking to so many companies and I've seen kind of unstructured data and structured data that we see. You know, we are doing logs, we're working for Dell, where we are, we have uh, kind of seen to it that their, you know, their entire uh, thought process of, I mean, if your Dell laptop goes wrong, just uh, call, when you call, just know that, you know, our system is working on it and the answers you're getting is actually faster than what they used to get because it goes into a knowledge base, simulates that. And this guy, even, and, and the next step is actually saying, you know, predicting CSR, which is saying that before you call Dell, they will know whether you're irate or not. So that's the level of predictions that, you know, we are going into that. Right, so the, when the ultimate goal is behavior change, predictive analytics and science of design can serve as two parts of a greater, more effective whole, and that's what I meant by do or do punch. Okay, now, uh, you know, some impediments. It's right. So I've taken this example of HR analytics because it will come very naturally to you. HR is the most abused department. I thought HR was only hire, fire, and picnic, but anyway, there are more than that, <laughs> and, uh, which is when I came to this side of the world. So I'm saying that, okay, let's see if you have, you know, uncertain. Now, this is, you know, the challenge is weakest as you go along. Now, the, uh, you know what this figure proves? Anybody, see, um, uncertain means it's the biggest challenge. You know, that uh, you can see that uh, thing is very adha full or less than adha full, and that guy is full, like you see. Now, do you know, do you see what it implies? You know, see, legacy is technology. I'm just giving you a hint that legacy is technology. And, answer, you know, unsure is, you know, asking that, I mean, they don't know what they want to do, right? So, what I'm trying to say is technology is not important. Technology is the easiest challenge, you know, which we think, are our legacy systems have this, that is the easiest challenge to overcome. The biggest challenge to overcome is not, you know, what do they want? So, I firmly believe, I, again, Firmly is a very vague word, but I'm saying that I believe that customers do not know what they want, right? But they definitely know what they don't want. Now, that's where the 
tilt goes. You know, in, in, if you're going on a mile field, you may not know where the bomb is, but you need to know where the bomb is not to step, which is what a mule does, right? And, and that's, that could be an effective strategy to see. Now, complex, HR has complex facets, uh, facets to take care of. Like, you know, you have, uh, you know, as in, in, in HR, some data is lying somewhere, some data is demographic, some data is coming from sales performance, some data is coming from where. So it's, it's kind of complex. High impact, this is when high, uh, and when, when decisions are made. And now, we have four clients, Two of them took six months to close. Two of them took 10 days to close. 10 days because HR was making decisions there, right? So it's if, and, and when I say HR, I mean any other department. You know, if they are taking decisions within and their stakeholders there, or they have direct connect with the CEOs, then it's fine. That's, that's high impact. And finally comes legacy, which is multiple data sources technology. It's, it's, it's not a big deal. You know, it can be solved very easily. It's a question of just knowing what you know, because uh, this complex uh, uh, case was another case where, you know, they'll say, ha, huh, we want to do, but we don't know what the IT will say. And IT will come up with the things that you can't do this, you can't do that, and you can't, you know. I mean, this is, these are the typical problems we face. But however, if we empathize with the IT right at the beginning, know what the problem is, and attempt, I'm sure that we can complete uh, things very fast. All right. Now, uh, coming to the last three slides, actually, four slides. So this is my hexagon thing, you know. But I put hexagons here because I wanted uh, you know, to tell you the stages of data analytics that we use within, which is personas, which is navigating ambiguity, which is you know, kind of causes data availability and data quality. Data quality is very important. You, know, you're, you don't even know, but in most companies, HR data and finance data do not match. You know, HR says we have 400 employees at a time, and finance will say, oh, no, I'm paying to 421. But why? Because that guy has resigned, so he's not in HR, and he's on probation, or whatever, on his notice period. Some guys have joined, but they're on probation. So, I mean, you know, that's, that's the kind of discrepancy we see. So, again, the first three are doing the right things, and the last three are doing things right, okay? And very quickly, I'll move on to just tell you what, oh, why is it? Okay, yeah, so this is an empathized thing, all right? I'm leaving this presentation, we can discuss with a lot of things later, because, you know, I just wanted to tell, it's, it's more than 10 minutes, I know. So, so consider all roles impacted by the outputs, consider all roles involved by the inputs, understand the questions that each user would like to answer, and understand the questions that each user would like to answer. So point is, if you see, we, there are questions around there, and the empathy happens right at that stage. So what I'm saying is, it's not even analytics then. So design thinking starts even before we think that you know, uh, we're doing it. And that's why we say that we are design-led. Okay? We start with end in the mind. And I'll come to what I mean by that. Okay? Now, let's see personas. I, I said that I'll take the HR example. So look at this. This is an HR manager, a champion. is an HRD, decision maker, C-level, final approval, Markham. If you have these four people on the board designing and asking questions, you're sure to strike the deal in no time because you know you're talking to the right people and you have the exact empathy or other statements that you want from them, right? Um, next is a very long slide, but so see, those are the uh, challenges which, is, which are typically in talent management elements. What is the impact of knowledge management? What is the correlation between performance and pay? Why, so see, you know, I firmly believe that if you give a dhobi list of questions to people, then they think, huh, this question belongs to me. Sometimes they'll not even, like I said, customers do not know what they want, but they know what they don't want. So when they, when they see, so always remember, 95% of the people are not looking for any solution, whether it is design thinking or whatever. 5% of people are looking in the market for solutions, but those 5% have already decided what they want. I mean, if I want a TV, I have researched what is QLED, what is OLED, what is Trinitron, what is what. I go to the store, I may just be swayed by my decision only when he says that, you know, OLED is actually every pixel, so you have true blacks. QLED is a small LED, so it is not a true black, it's kind of a grayish black, or whatever. You know, but, but point is I've decided, and that's where the latent uh, story comes into play. That's when, when you say that, you know what, uh, you go to a bank and they say, no, we don't want anything. We said, you know what, we did for Barclays and this what. Ajay, what did you, so that's you know, kind of a latent pain coming up. So they don't have a pain, but they have a latent pain, which they don't even know about, and which is what it is, right? So these are just, and if you see, most of my slides are most about questions, 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 questions. And that is what a designer should do in terms of, you know, asking questions. And, and again, design not as a craft, but design is a thought, you know, I should say. Right, and so this is the ideate part, which is aggressively collaborate to identify right questions to be answered, identify causes of impact in form of questions. Identify the data required, again. So, you know, uh, can you see it is so similar to what 
you know, a design thinking processes, but you're, you're talking about an analytics company now. And then ascertain the source and evaluate the quality of data, right? And then you come to something. Now, this is where we start prototyping. Prototyping to us means wireframes. We are showing them what they will get right away. We are not saying that, you know. So remember, in today's time, you know, uh, when a product manager earlier used to draw an app and say, yeah, the Facebook app, yeah, pay, you have likes, you have this, you have this, and the engineer used to do. Today in AI, if he draws a car and gives to guy, he'll say, what it is? I mean, I don't understand. What are you trying to say? I mean, you know, the car. So he'll say, you'll have to give them an exclusive data set. You have to give him a KPI that you want monitored. And you have to give him what accuracy you want. You know, so you have to say 99% accuracy of a self-driving car is what I want. So even the things have changed. So remember, an internet company doesn't mean a Kirana store plus website. Doesn't mean that. A, a normal technology company plus AI doesn't mean that it is an analytics firm. Not at all. You know, an analytics firm is about acquiring data, acquiring the right data, and, and, and so many other things, which you'll also hear from other speakers. Right, so this is, this is, these are the kind of wireframes we create when they come alive in their mind, they say, ha ha, this is what we want. So this is not Lego serious play or Lego play. This is actually creating you know, wireframes for them. But Lego is what comes closest to people when you're in a class or when you're demonstrating you know, uh, to them, right? Um, this is the last but one slide which says that you know, test with use. I mean, you would have heard these a lot, which is you know, it shouldn't be useless, it shouldn't be pointless, it shouldn't be thoughtless. AI with bias, very important discrimination. You know, uh, this is a small discrimination thing which I wanted to say. Uh, it, it's very prevalent in analytics where sales, you'll find in a lot of large sales companies, they don't have data on you know, uh, female employees. So they kind of start predicting that only males can do good sales. Just because they don't have data on females. Now, that's discrimination because you have not, uh, you know, shown. Or by ethnicity. If you start saying that a particular religion or this doesn't sell properly and others do or this one doesn't code properly, that's discrimination which can come if your data is wrong, if your data quality is not good. That can come. Right? And untrustworthy is obviously updates. You know, if anybody of you, I don't own an iPhone, so I don't know, but iPhone 6 phase 5 faced major problems when an upgrade came. So you have to see whether the thing is trustworthy, and that ML algorithm actually shattered the phone uh, big time, right? And yeah, this is actually the last slide, OK? Now, uh, <laughs> no, this is actually the last slide. Yes, it's thank you after that. So, <laughs> so you're seeing, uh, you know, so um, I have copied this from one Mr. Uh, tunes and, and uh, refines tuning and whatever it is, which I've given credit to, which is John Morley and Associates. It is, it is, I think, the best explained slide on you know, how you go about design thinking and how you go about machine thinking. And you'll see uh, this is what we had explained there in terms of analyze, sympathize. So he has, I've used his words only in analyze, sympathize, although we had started with empathy and, you know, uh, it, and, and my own words, which was ideate and others. But this is, this is what I you know, want to leave you with. And I thought that this is, this is something that uh, was really trustworthy and something which was gelling with me. And yes, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a difficult world to run a company. But I'm sure that design thinking has taken me places. In one and a half years, we now have 18 clients, 18 paying clients, if I may. They may not play, pay on time, but <laughs> they're still paying clients. And uh, I, I credit it to design thinking. And that's why we say we are design-led. And that's why Alok thought that I should come and talk to you guys. Thank you so much.